Yes, I hear you. I hear you guys. We are ready. Hello. Hello, Atlanta. Back to Beverly Hills. So I understand you guys had some technical difficulties. Well, on our part, Lou Levy and his crew from Stratacom did it perfectly. But I hear your Atlanta guys need some of Terry Devine's fi fancy uh, microprocessors in order to uh, get the full live feeds up there. We're going to do our next case here. Our next case is a crystal lens. This is a patient, and I did his first eye about a month ago. His first eye did beautifully, his right eye. He had achieved 2015 minus 2 at distance and then a fabulous J2 for near. And the vision were checked by my uh, in-house in optometrist, not me. But he wants a little bit more on the reading. So we'll do the second eye with a pinch of near vision, a refractive target of maybe minus a half, maybe minus 75. So we'll, we'll start off here, our usual, making a simple paracentesis. I find that when I do that with one eye absolutely plain out, the other eye about a minus half, minus 75, even that minus 75 eye achieves very sharp distance vision, often 20, 30-ish, plus or minus, often better. I'll put in a little lidocaine. I mean, this is a patient where, on his first surgery, he did have some floppiness of the iris. So here comes the lidocaine, and that often stings a little bit. Then our next step is some epinephrine. Now the epi I'll put actually under the iris. This is epi diluted to about 1 in 5,000, preservative-free epi. And that just will give the iris a little extra tone. Probably not going to do much more to the dilation, but if you can stiffen that up, it'll make my life easier. And as we know, the crystal lens, lens works better if we have a great capsorexis. So we're going to spend some time really working on that. Here's the Ambisc Plus. Again, great choice because it's so cohesive that will really deepen up that AC. In addition, it really flattens that lens capsule. I'm going to go a little brighter on the lights here. And here's our main incision. Again, this is that diamond keratome. It's about two millimeters wide. So now I, I know someone's asking, well, why are you going to do FACO through a two millimeter incision? And you see how nice and square that incision is. Perfect. Why do FACO through a 2 millimeter incision when you're just going to enlarge it at the end of 2.8 to put the lens in? Well, I'll tell you, because there's a better sealing of the incision if you do FACO through a small incision and then slightly enlarge it. So here's our same capsule rexus forceps. We'll ease on in here. Let me just move this drape out of the way. There's, there we go. And we'll poke in. You'll notice these have sharp tips on them. And because they have sharp tips, I'm able to just poke in. I don't use a cystotome. No, no, I'm telling you we're good. We don't need a cystotome. That's why we have these sharp tips. So we'll tear our rexus, and I want to tear it a nice, generous one. Now, I'm used to doing just a quick two or three grab rexus with my larger incision and my regular lenses, but I really, really spend some time with the crystal lens patients to make sure I get the rectus just how I want it. And we'll see that here. Jim, look down for me a touch. Perfect. And we got a nice, super generous rexus. Now, it's OK if you need to when you're doing the rexus. Do you have any doubt? Stop. A little more Ambisc Plus. You see how that nicely flattens it down? Always better to put a pinch more viscoelastic. Take your time. Just make sure it turns out well. When you see the real superstars like the Whitmans and the Devines and the Lindstroms operate, and truly the Bragamilis operate, they do things a lot faster and more efficiently than me. But I'm a regular guy. And I achieve a big success in my practice with this lens, and I'll show you why. So there's our nice round rexus. It's probably around the six and a half size, maybe even a pinch larger. We'll do our hydro dissection here. And I'm going to try something a little different for you guys. I'm going to try to bring this nucleus part the way out of the bag. And then once it's partly out of the bag, we're going to chop it in half. A little tilt and chop, if you will. So there's our nucleus. A little hydro dissection's done. Now I will put some more OccuCoat. This is a, the dispersive here. And that's so that we can protect our endothelium further. There you go. Perfect. So 
as soon as you put the phacal probe in the eye, here's where I'll really make use of the dual linear. So in the dual linear, let's get that phacal sleeve on here, and I'll, I'll explain it. Please put that on there. So while Tony is preparing that for me, on our foot pedal, I'll start by going down straight on the pedal. But when I want to really get a good purchase on the nucleus to hold it for chopping, that's when I'll yaw my pedal over to the right. And on my settings, you can program what you like. On my settings, that's like a turbo vacuum, even more vacuum. Thank you, Tony. And we'll take a look here. Let me just adjust that sleeve for you. Perfect. Now I want to also say a big thank you to the b &L team. I know Abby and her team really put a tremendous amount of effort into this. There we go. And that looks like a pretty good setup on our phacal needle. So put this in the eye. I like to also use the same chopper to lift the incision up. And now we'll, uh, as soon as we get in here, yaw to the right, phaco in, chopper behind, and two halves. First half I push in the bag, and the second half I bring up. And now you'll notice I'm going to give a minimal amount of energy. The energy settings are super low. I have learned from Terry in his uh, summary of those studies to use this high pulse rate in order to get that better followability. And you'll see, I'm going to turn the light up brighter for you guys so you can see it a little better. So the first half is here. We're taking it out now. The followability is superb, so I don't have to really chase the pieces. They stick there on the tip. This really has done a lot to eliminate chatter. Look at the piece on the tip, and as I give the energy, they stay right there. I don't have to chase anything. They come to me. And we take those down. Perfect. So buzz into this piece here. Bring it up. There we go. Bring that around. Perfect. And you'll see that it's really mostly vacuum. I think we've really gone into that vacuum doing most of the work. So it's like it's the ultrasound assisted aspiration of the nucleus. The ultrasound is there to just keep things moving. But look, with this big piece of nucleus, we can just hold it here without chasing. And the pieces come to you. And you'll notice there truly is an absence of chatter. You're welcome to have these settings. i got to give credit to Jim Smith from VNL, who is truly knows more about fakofluidics than me and Terry Devine combined, as well as fake Parmelage Agents. He came here and helped me set this up and really fine-tune my settings. So again, no chatter, no chasing, nothing. Just hold still and take the pieces down. And there's the last piece, and uh, we're good. We're ready for our INA, please. Again, we'll use my uh, favorite INA these days, and that's, that's uh, stores is nice disposable one. IA. It goes through our two millimeter incision. You can see for our settings, if you look at the MMC, the multimedia center, the overlay, you can see what the settings we're using here. So this is the vacuum based fluidics, not the flow based. So we don't set the, vac the flow rate in independently. It varies with the vacuum. Again, now here, I like a circumferential move. And we'll take the cortex down. You can see that really the vacuum on this machine is just superb. Probably one of my most enjoyable parts of the FACO procedure now is doing this INA because it's just so much easier than it was before. No struggling, super efficient, super smooth. And I truly love the fluidics. I mean, for such a tiny instrument, I literally have not changed any of my settings. Normally you'd expect, well, yeah, you're going to go to a smaller size incision, smaller tubing. You're going to have to change your settings. Well, somehow the B&L guys have figured this out. And the bottom line take home message for me is I don't change my settings. So here's a little capsule polishing. It's actually quite nice and clear there. And there's not much on the anterior capsule rim, so we'll leave that be. Perfect. We'll take the... We'll switch to this, and I'll take the ambisc. I'm going to fill our bag up. Jim, do me a favor. On my patient, Jim, look down. Perfect. Now look right at the light. That's gorgeous. Here's the ambisc plus. Again, I like this because 
Easy to remove and a nice, good, complete fill. There's our Rexus. That looks like a reasonable Rexus. And a nice, complete fill. We'll be using the new Crystal Cert injector. That's nice and complete. I'll use a, just a traditional 2.8 millimeter diamond keratome. And then Jim looked down again. Perfect. And this is just to enlarge the incision for the Crystal Cert. Crystal Cert's really quite nice because it puts it in without any of that twisting or turning. None of those issues. Take your hands, please. Take your tongue. So again, you know, I lift the incision up here. You'll see the crystal cert. It's a beveled tip here. We're going to go bevel in this orientation. The lens is here in the shaft, and you see how it's already nicely folded. The key in doing this, which I've learned, and I learned things the hard way, is to really aim it towards the optic nerve. And as we do this, we'll see we'll get the two in there. And there's the round haptic on the right, so I know it's correct. There's a bend in the optic, so it bends the correct orientation. And then now I use my chopper and the injector, and we push it in cleanly. And the whole thing is totally in the bag, one fell swoop. Well, actually, we'll make sure it's in the bag. There you go. I used to rotate the lens 90 degrees. I don't do that anymore. I'll tell you why. I think it, it, I don't have, I never saw a difference whether I rotated 90 degrees or left in this orientation. So these days I leave in this current orientation. One thing I will do, let me take your squirt bottle, Tony, please. Let me squirt off some of this viscoelastic from the eye. One thing I will do is that I will hydrate the incisions prior to removing the viscoelastic. And this is so I don't flatten out the AC and shift the position of the lens at the end when I withdraw the IA from the eye. Good. So nice hydration of the paris of the main incision. Parasites I usually save for later. We have a myostat as well. Let's do a myostat. You can cook that up. Yeah, please. Myostat and then the dilu the del normal dilution. And then here's our IA. Now I've switched to a larger IA. You'll notice just so it fits the incision better. Good. And let me do this. While Tony's setting that up, I'm just going to put some more Occupy on the eye to give a good view. Jim, look down for me. Perfect. There's some more Occupy. Yes, sir. And removing the viscoelastic. You can see the ambus comes out so easily. It's very, very much a pleasure to use here, including from here behind the lens. And because it comes out so easily, I find that I don't have to dwell in the eye too long with this. You can see the, the rexus is a little bit larger than the optic there, which is good. And we had no issues because of that epi with Jim's floppy iris. That looks great. We'll hydrate the incisions a little bit better. I think a lot of... Uh, a lot of people have found success with this crystal lens. It's not that much of a different technique than what you're used to. And in my own practice, it now counts for the majority of all lenses, not just a majority of premium lenses, but the majority of all lenses I put. I will use this cannula to make sure the lens is posteriorly vaulted and the foot plates are at the capsule equator. And then, Tony, I'll, I'll take this. This mine also. Yep, and we're going to zoom here at the end and give you a nice, beautiful shot here. Here's a little myostat. This is a trick I learned from Dick Lindstrom. Thank you, Dick. It's made a big difference. Just a pinch of diluted myostat at the end of the case. And now we'll finish hydrating the incisions here. And I'll show you just one last thing. We'll check our incisions. I'll take that tetracaine on a Wexel, please. And then you can see how this lens truly, truly is posteriorly vaulted there in the eye. Here's the tetracaine on the wax cell just to make my patient happy. And we'll check everything, and that looks gorgeous. Thank you, guys. So thank you for being a part of this program. I truly enjoyed doing the live surgery. The only bad part is i got to catch a red eye now so I can join you guys in the morning. But uh, back to you, Dick, in Atlanta. And thank you again. Thank you, Bausch and Lomb. I think it's a new era you'll soon see that this is the new way of doing cataract surgery. It certainly is for me.
bye now.